Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey. Yay. So we got one person in the room and two people on Skype. This should be interesting. Totally or you can it. just admit that you're by yourself and so are the rest of us. Well, that's what I said. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, some people have been asking uh, what we thought about Sony and uh, Nintendo, especially because our thoughts on Microsoft and... Ubisoft went up earlier today. It actually was going to go up very early today, but um, my computer and the internet didn't get along for half the day. So, huh? Nothing. Thanks, honey. Anywho, so uh, we're here to talk about Sony's press conference, aka the press conference that every, every gamer wants from these three companies. Um, I don't... I don't want to sound like the, they did it perfectly because they did it, but at the same time... Did we introduce ourselves yet? No, no. we did not. <laughs> I'm Lehu. I was waiting to call that out. I know, I was just like, either it's going to be either me or Paige. I can't remember. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm Lehu. I'm Erin. And I'm Paige. I'm sorry, I just got so excited. I got so excited because Sony made one of my dreams come true last night, but we'll... we'll okay, we'll, let's get to that in a little bit. We'll, we'll get to that, yeah. Um... But the big thing to take away from Sony is that gamers have been saying for years with events like this, especially D3, we don't care about the secondary stuff, just show us the games. And that's exactly what Sony did last night. If I can say something about the best, like why, I hate putting different shows in front of others, but you know what, with what we've seen this year, yeah, Sony was by far one of the best things I've seen in a long time from mm -hmm. E3. And it's all because they brought in orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's the only reason why? Okay, so Paige, I don't know if you saw this when you watched the God of War trailer. Because, I did. Uh, yeah, the full orchestra that they played for like six minutes before they introduced God of War. Oh, it wasn't I, just God of War. Like, they played live music throughout the entire thing. Yeah. I almost started to question on whether it was the actual conference or if it was, like, the wrong thing I was watching. But, yeah. I, I was laughing really hard because, of course, Twitter was coming up with joke after joke. Like, man, this would be really funny if this was in, to announce Little Big Planet, which was, uh, I think <laughs> I think Jim Sterling tweeted that out, and that made me laugh really hard because if they would have pulled that, I think the theater would have started burning to the ground. <laughs> I would have cried, not tears of being extremely upset, but laughter, and finally somebody was that crazy to do something like that. That would have been as great of a troll as uh, the South Park guys did with their trailer during Ubisoft. I loved it. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, because we brought it up, let's uh, discuss God of War first, which was... a very, very, very different look than what... I, uh, at least I've seen from this series. I know you two haven't played this, but as someone who's played the first three games, it looks like they really are doing something different with this. Kratos with that dad bod, though. <laughs> <laughs> and the dad beard. Yeah, I didn't recognize him at first. Like, everyone was like, oh my god, it's Kratos. And I'm like, no, it's not. He has facial. Oh my god, it's Kratos. Yeah. Even like, I recognized him, Aaron. It, well, was, it was one of those things where he's like, we hunt. I was like, oh, there he is. It was like, at that point, like, I could see what was going on, but I kind of wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. Yeah. So. Yeah, Kratos goes uh, full on dad mode in this game, and. One of the things that I really took away from that trailer is that they're not sacrificing the insane gameplay that God of War is known for, the incredible bosses that God of War is known for, but they're adding on to it a more humanizing Kratos. Like, uh, I tweeted out that it was weird seeing Kratos not being pissed off. He really took an arrow, not to the knee, but he took an arrow to the shoulder. Yeah, they're, yeah, they show off a boss fight between a troll and his son is trying to aim at the troll and just shoots him in the arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Paige, what do you what do you got on this? I mean, I can't say much about it because I haven't played the other games, but from what I did see, I really liked it, and I don't know. How you were talking about Kratos, I like the fact that his son's there and just like the directions of everything and you could see the start of the story like building there and just 
darn, like, the monsters and everything appearing, like, it really got me, and it really wanted me to get it to play. Yeah. It, it did its job. It was nice having... It was go- It was also good seeing that they, like, you could see the guy playing it as they were playing it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Sony always does that, though. Yeah. They, um, they're they pretty good about that. They, they kind of learned, I think it was, like, three or four years ago, they got heavily criticized for that, and uh, they've been learning from it. So, uh, I thought they were like the front runners of that. No, it was. I think the front runners of that really was. I it was either them or Nintendo, or it was a AAA developer. Oh, uh, but um, let's move on to a game that I know the both of you want to talk about very heavily, and that is uh, right. gr- yeah, that's Guerrilla Games Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh my God! Yeah, female Eric- protag. What? Female protag. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. We'll let Aaron start with this one. So, Aaron, you pointed out uh, very interestingly that you saw a lot of Bayonetta in terms of the hand-to-hand combat in this. Um, it was really kind of interesting because going through um, all the tweets about E3, everyone kept trying to pinpoint what game it reminded them of the most, and I was very surprised that no one pointed out Bayonetta. Um, simply because like, even whenever you're in the middle of the game... It gave me that whole Bayonetta vibe because it slows down so that, like, nothing stops. Like, it's you're not being taken out of the game. It's just, you're still there. I know, like, I'm trying really hard to figure out how to describe this. But in Bayonetta, what happens whenever you're trying to do a combo or if you're trying to get a really powerful attack, time slows down. And you can actually focus on what you're doing. And I got a huge, um, got a huge gut feeling that that was something that they were going for. And I thought they pulled it off really nicely, especially when she's trying to mount the. Um, oh my gosh, what is it? Do like one of the monsters, one of the robot monsters. Not even a monster. Like it's, it's really hard to explain like what kind of universe this is. It's like one of those that you really have to see. Now I'm trying to describe it and I'm really struggling here because it's just so different. Yeah. Well, what it is, it's like, it's like we, it's like humans have gone back to the prehistoric age, but the reason we have is because animal robot dinosaurs have taken over. That's a, have, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, that's what really pulled my attention to the game was the whole prehistoric, like hunter gatherer bow and arrow stuff. And then you see, like, technology walking around, and you have to deal with that, too. It was a nice, like, it meshed well. Yeah. Well, this is Guerrilla Games. Uh, this is their first original IP, and uh, I'd say, I think it's definitely over 10 years, because they're the guys who made uh, Killzone. Um, oh, yeah. And I frankly 2004, really... I'm actually looking at it right now. Yeah, I frankly really like that series, so I'm really curious to see how they're going to do with this. Aaron, I think what you're trying to, like... I get what you're trying to say. It is interesting. Like, it's a good move that during the combat they have the snap map option in terms of your inventory instead of having you to, like, pause the game to pull up your inventory to find the weapons. Um, a lot of a lot of shooters have been doing that lately, but what I noticed that you pointed out is that this does it, seem, this does it really seamlessly, which is good. Specifically because, like, whenever, like, the thing I notice about first-person shooters specifically, it's just, like, okay, now let's see, I have to dig through this. And, like, at that point, you kind of feel detached from the game. Yeah, it takes you out. But because this is in third person, I feel like it uses it to its advantage. It's, like, because you're watching from her point of view the entire time that you're never once removed from any of the action in the game. Uh Uh-huh. And I think that really does work to their advantage. Yeah. I uh, I wholeheartedly agree, actually. Mm-hmm. I like it. Thank you. Go ahead, Paige. No, I don't really have much more to say other than what I said earlier and what Aaron had to say. Aaron, you were quite insightful. Thank mm-hmm. you, Paige. I really appreciate that coming from you. Yeah, uh, well. I know. We try sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, if you guys got nothing else to say on this, I'll, uh, I'll do my piece. I think the... I think the game is going to be excellent. Um, I was really impressed with what I saw from it. It looks, um, it looks like what I wanted Far Cry Primal to be. You know what? Now that you mention it, that is pretty much what it is. Yeah, it had that feel, except better. 
Except it's in third person. I like that it's in third person. I think that's interesting. I think you got a better story you're working with here too, because there's one thing that Killzone that I've re I really appreciate about Killzone is that it looks like a generic shooter if you just look at gameplay footage of it, but its story was it was good. I wouldn't say it was great, but what it was trying to discuss the idea of like are the villains really villains and all this. I really did like how they explored that through the series. Like you knew there was straight up just absolute villains on the one side, but they represented it. It was essentially like Killzone is kind of looking at the conflict of, you know, people versus Nazis, um, just in a futuristic, futuristic setting. But what I always appreciated that they did about those games is that, um, the people that they're always fighting against is called the Hellgas. It would show just normal civilian Hellgas who were just normal people. So, um, Gorilla definitely knows how to tell stories, and the fact that they are being so mysterious with this story, it's got me very interested to see what we're going to get out of this, and I think the world they've built is incredible. So... Yeah. No, because, like, I really do love the idea of the post-apocalyptic eh, post worlds whenever you're using video games as the medium that you're playing around with. But I've always wanted to see a game that actually, it's post-apocalyptic, but they go back in time. Like, why can't we make things simpler than they once were? It Like, I know that, like, it's a giant step backwards, but at the same time, I feel like we need to reflect on, like, what we once had and maybe, like, it'll help society in a way. And I've always wanted to toy around with that idea, personally. Yeah. So seeing, seeing Horizon Zero Dawn come together the way that it's been I'm really excited because I've always it, wanted to see this kind of story it's an original uh take on the apocalypse it's not like the dystopian stuff you always see now yeah no right. I, I wholeheartedly agree I, I mean I imagine that and I know for Aaron this is probably at the top of her 2017 most anticipated oh you have no idea <laughs> so uh yeah, let's uh let's move on. Um, cause now we're gonna get while well, we're getting into games that just got trailers, um, weren't really shown gameplay wise, but there's a lot to unpack. Uh, we got a trailer for the Last Guardian, and we got a release date. Finally. Yeah, yeah, seven years. Seven years we've been waiting for this, and we finally got a release date, which seems insane. Um, so. I thought the trailer looked great for it. The fact that we got a release date of October 5th, uh, 25th, 2016, I think that's huge. I can't wait for that game. Um, it's looking more beautiful every time we see it. I was excited about it during last E3, and then I was just more excited about it this one. Yeah. No, that was Am I going to sound like a jerk when I say I kind of forgot about it? Since last E3? No, I, I wouldn't say you sound like a jerk. They haven't talked about it at all. Yeah. So, um, I think it, I think it's interesting that it started as a PS3 game, and the reason it moved to the PS4 is because they needed more powerful hardware to make the mechanics between the little boy and that chicken, dog, adorable thing, whatever it is, work. I was just thinking the, uh, what is it, the never-ending story? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh jeez! I was I, just saying, thinking like PlayStation's version of a hippogriff. <laughs> I, I I don't know I, what else to call it. I've tweeted this out the last two years. I tweeted out every time I see footage of this. They better not kill that chicken dog thing. I'd rather have the little boy die than that chicken dog thing. I don't want either one to die. <laughs> I'm feel like connected to them both. Yeah, it, that, that's if they what, both died. Then we can all be happy. Oh no. <laughs> Although, knowing this studio, that probably is how it's going to end. I mean, we already hear that uh, he has a broken wing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that was, that was a, like a little touch, like, oh, no. Um, yeah, that thing's dead. Oh, don't, 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 <laughs> don't say that. Don't you say that. What? Don't. I don't, I, I don't want to think about it, because the fact that, like, even in all the trailers, they've had that thing, like, they've had that dog bird thing cry. I'm just like, oh, come on, don't do that to me. Yeah, that's one thing that I can't stand, because it makes me have emotions. It <laughs> cries every single year. Yeah. It's crying because it hasn't been released yet. Uh, it's very uh, interesting how Sony made the sound effects for that thing crying, because it's all the collective tears of every single fan of The Last Guardian waiting 
and waiting. No, if I was looking, out, it was delayed again. No, if, we, if it was Twitter last night, it was all the fans of that wanted The Last of Us Two and didn't get it. You know what? I think we were. I think we were okay without it. It's like I don't know. We got way too much last night. I feel like adding The Last of Us Two it would just get lost in the bunch. Well, I'm the person who didn't like the ending of The Last of Us Two, so I'm frankly okay without getting another one. I'm not. You already played The Last of Us Two. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like the ending of The Last of Us. First Revelations, and then uh, yeah, Last of Us Two. Wow, Alex, you're really ahead. <laughs> Alex just gets all the games like years ahead of time. I am a prophet of gaming, and I can say as a prophet, we are never getting Half Life Three. <laughs> Get off your damn soapbox. <laughs> Okay, so uh, next up was uh, Ben Studios, who I haven't seen those guys in a long time. Um, they are doing a new game called Days Gone, which at first just looked like a post-apocalyptic game, and then it turned out to be a zombie game that has a lot of zombies chasing you at one time, like Dead Rising. I, I think this game was the weakest of all the games that Sony showed off. I get what they did because it's original IP, but I just, I'm so sick of zombie games. Yeah, me too. I totally second that. Let's just end all zombie games. <laughs> That's going to sound hypocritical because I got we're like I got really excited about one zombie game that got showed off, but um, but that's a zombie game that's been established for a while now. Um, but as new IPs, I just think that's the lazy way of doing horror games now. So... Um, it looks okay. It looks like for what it is, it's going to be good, but I just, I can't get excited about it because there's 15 other games that are like this, A, and B, I don't understand why Sony decided to close with this. This is that, that's actually why I don't think this press conference was perfect because I think closing on this with like a gameplay demo of this was actually kind of weak. How can you say this game is not interesting and weak? When it has such a great love story addition to it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, I, I got really scared for a second. I know you... I, have you guys heard of Ride to Hell? Yes. Okay. Yes? Yeah, Ride to Hell Retribution is known as one of the worst games, and it's a game where you play as a motorbike gang. <laughs> so I saw a guy on a motorcycle, I'm like, oh, don't do this to me. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there were a couple YouTubers who have uh, reviewed that game that when they saw the motorcycle, like the guy riding on the motorcycle, it's like they got PTSD for five seconds thinking about Ride to Hell. Oh my God, which ones? Uh, Pro Jared, Angry Joe, Jim Sterling, they all were like, no, no, don't do this. <laughs> oh yeah, I can totally see Angry Joe doing that. <laughs> Angry, Angry Joe, like... The review of his, his review of it, it opened with him like in a corner sucking his thumb. Oh. <laughs> so, um, and he he said he said in multiple interviews like that's the worst game he's ever reviewed for that show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um. So, I don't know. I just I am so not excited about zombie games anymore. Whenever I see them, the only reason I got somewhat excited about Dead Rising because that's a game that just knows how stupid zombies are at this point, and it just says screw it. I felt like it was taking itself too seriously. Me too. If I just zombies, yeah, it's just it, it's so done. I'd rather see a game about vampires or werewolves, like. Say what you will about the Order Order eighteen eighty six. It was a cash grab, but I was excited at least that it was werewolves instead of zombies for once. See, I'm still reeling from the PTSD of uh, being a Twilight fan in middle school, so I'm not going to go with the whole vampire thing. Yeah, I, Alex. I will go with the vampire thing because you know what's a great vampire movie that came out during the Twilight. Uh, days it was called Daybreakers, and I told every Twilight fan who said I love vampires to go see it, and they came back crying, and I got a good laugh. By the I way, think I remember you telling that story before. By the way, if you haven't seen the movie Daybreakers, um, it is very cheap to find, and you should watch it. It's amazing. So, just quick plug for that. Um, so let's move on from Days Gone um, to one of the big bombs. At least, to me, 
Um, oh, gee, wonder what this one is. <laughs> this was one that uh, I've been asking for for years, along with many other Sony fans. Um, I thought I personally didn't think it was ever going to happen because uh, he, he the rights for this are at Activision, but because Activision and Sony are now buddy buddy with Call of Duty, we're getting Crash back. Woo! Yeah. I didn't. I didn't think that was gonna happen. Um, in all honesty, I didn't know. I didn't. I thought Activision was just gonna greedily hold on to that, and we were never gonna see it again. Uh, but yesterday they did. An, they did an awesome thing where the screen was black. They uh, started playing Crash the Theme. They had. Um, Alex cried. Not cried. Crapped maybe. Um, that might be worse. Cried. Cried. <laughs> and they cried. Um, but, like, if you looked at the audience, the audience was losing their minds when they announced it. Yeah. Um, because this is something, this is something that they've, like, fans have been asking for this for years. And, uh, what they announced is that we're getting a remaster of the first three games built from the ground up, so it's gonna be in 1080p, I would imagine. Um, and they're gonna be rebuilt with... All new HD capabilities, uh, trophies, all that stuff, which I'm super excited for. And what I think they are doing is that um, Sony and Activision are going to release the remasters. They're going to see how well they do financially. And if they do well enough financially, I will not be surprised if we get a new game. Well, I mean, of course, that's probably going to happen. Yeah. If it does well, I mean, if you heard the audience last night, there's a good chance that that could happen in the near future. And and Sony's not going to let Activision ha like half go at this like they did with Tony Hawk Five. They're going to make them go at it. The other thing that I thought was really interesting was right after, and I know this was like hard to hear because of everybody screaming, but at the same time, I'm glad that not very many people heard it. Um, Sky, like they said that there's going to be a Skylar Landers game, and it said with Crash Bandicoot at the bottom of it. And I'm like, that's not something that you just casually go, hey, check out our like newest game. Oh yeah, by the way, Crash Bandicoot's in it, but Skylanders. I'm like, well, no, because they showed off a full trailer. I mean, we knew that the the it, the game of Skylanders Imaginators is a new version of Skylanders. They announced it a month ago. And um, they showed off a trailer showing that Crash is in the game. We're going to get a figure of Crash, although no one's seen the figure for Crash yet. Um, so that, you buy that up? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I don't even own Skylanders, and I'm going to buy that figure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it's exciting because this opens the door for a lot of things. I think if Crash does well, there's also going to be talks. You know, It's going to start the talks for, you know, what about Spyro? Yes. Yes, yes, I yes. love that. Yeah, so I think this opens the door for possibly a new Spyro, like maybe a Spyro 1 through 3 remaster, which I would be totally cool with as well because I played the heck out of those games when I was young. Um, so, yeah, I'm super excited for this. I've actually, one of the big things that I've wanted PS4 to do is to go back and take PS1 games and make them trophy, uh, trophy compatible like they've been doing with the PS2 games, which I think is brilliant. Um, because that app, that offers a new way to go back and play those games again. And I think if, you know, if this remaster does well, I think those talks are going to become heavier. Please, these remasters, like, we all know these are going to do well. If the audience response is anything to, like, go off of, they're already probably planning the new game. Yeah, you know what, you're probably right. Yep. Um... And it will, and I've I've been one that like I hate when they remaster stuff from the PlayStation Three era. But if you're gonna remaster stuff from PlayStation One and PlayStation Two, I, I'm all for it. I really am. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I'll take a remaster of this over a remaster of uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum and Arkham City because uh, to me that's just pointless. Mm -hmm. So. Um, after Crash, um, Sony brought out one of, uh, well, before we get to that, uh, I, we should talk about PlayStation VR, which uh, they were very quick about, which I liked. They came out, they set a price date, um, they set a price and a date, uh, $399, October 13th, if I'm correct? 
I will. I'm pretty. I thought it was thirteenth. I could have sworn I saw nineteenth. I thought it was thirteenth. So, but I'm they yeah they showed the date. Uh, PlayStation VR three ninety nine October thirteenth, and then instead of saying like the VR is going to be amazing, it's going to be powerful. No, they went right to games. That's the way to do it. Yeah, no, they knew. Uh, they they showed off uh, a game like a new IP that they're working on. They showed off a Batman VR, which I had to look at the trailer for later. Thank you, Aaron. Because I totally knew they were going to show it when I asked, "Hey, can you help? Uh, get me some food?" <laughs> and as soon as you went upstairs, Mark Hamill came on, came on and I'm just like, oh my god, he's going to dump me today. <laughs> no, I'm not going to dump you. All I ask is that you buy me the, the Last Guardian for my birthday. That's it. I love how relationships work. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... Fine. Yay! Um... So they showed that, they showed Batman VR, they showed a Final Fantasy VR demo, which, for all the, like, for all the anime fans, I think that's opening a dangerous door. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. I don't know why they decided to go with the opening that they did, because it looked like they were setting up a camera, and then they just looked up and, like, smiled, and they're like, let's go kick some butt! And then, all of a sudden, all the... Hi, this is Final Fantasy XV. Welcome to Jackass. Tweets came flooding through. <laughs> I'm just like, you asked for it. <laughs> I, uh, I saw that later in the night, and it, it, it made me laugh really hard. Because I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, this is opening such a dangerous door. <laughs> knowing, knowing some Final Fantasy fans, not saying they're all bad, but knowing some of them, this is opening such a dangerous door. <laughs> Yeah. Um, especially especially if people start figuring out how to mod it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I will learn how to mod just so I can work with this. Uh, no, you won't. <laughs> You're right, I don't have the patience. Yeah. Can you imagine if Nintendo announced a Fire Emblem VR? I don't want to imagine that. <laughs> no. Let's just avoid that topic. Well, because uh, I don't want to get excited for something that's not there. <laughs> oh, you don't think Nintendo's thinking about it? Shut up. Um, Surprise, that's what the NX is. <laughs> They're coming out the new console. <laughs> well, there, there, there was a rumor that I saw that the, the reason the NX is taking so long is because they realized the other two were going to put VR in it, and Nintendo's like, oh, we should probably do that too. And I was like, no, I rather appreciate you guys did it. <laughs> Could you imagine after seeing the Zelda stuff today, doing that in VR? Oh, yeah. No one would leave their homes again. Or at least they'd be lost. Yeah, Nintendo fans would never leave their homes again. Wait, maybe we should stay on track. Wow, I cannot believe I just said that. Let's stay on track. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are staying on track because we're going to talk about the other VR demo they showed, which was uh, this very creepy... Very atmospheric horror game that everyone went, oh my god, no, not PT, don't do this to Wait, us. I didn't realize that was VR. Yeah, that was yes. VR. Did you, not, did you not see my wonderful tweet? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that, that, this, uh, the trailer that we're talking about, that was the VR version of this game page. Permission to swear? No. <laughs> <laughs> Think of some other words. Because I know what you're going to say. You're going to say what everyone said when they announced Resident Evil 7. Um, this was rumored to be shown at some point during E3. We finally saw it last night uh, in this VR demo. And Sony came out and said, yeah, Resident Evil 7 is going to be totally compatible with PlayStation VR. In which everyone went, yeah, no. No, no. <laughs> Notice how I ran off to the bathroom after you, they said that because I almost peed myself last night. <laughs> there are some things that should never come to VR, and horror stuff is definitely the number one. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Especially if it's from most of the developers that were part of the PT team. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they hey, also... guys! They also dropped the bomb that um, the, uh, the demo for the game was going to be out that night. So the demo is out. And uh, I'm going to be playing and recording it right after we get done with this. 
I don't know how that's going to go, but... Uh, it was great knowing you. Yeah, at if least... If it goes as well as you uh, did with PT, then it's not going to go that well. Mm, I'm going to be alone on this, too. This is going to make it extra fun. Okay, but was Aaron and I ever, like, that much help? No. I, I almost say this well, This is an adventure I should take alone, just with a flashlight and... Uh, it's five... dangerous to go alone. Yeah, flashlight, five pair, pairs of pants. Maybe six. Yeah, maybe six. Um, I don't even know if I have six pairs of pants, but we're going to find out. Um, but speaking of free demos, uh, they also really quickly, I don't know why they did this, but after a crash, they really quickly showed off Lego Star Wars, which comes out in two weeks. Um, I know Aaron loves the Lego series of video games. Paige, oh, have you... I have so many Lego versions of video games, it's not even funny. Have you, so so you've played a good amount of them? Uh, yes, including Star Wars. And do, do you Indiana like, Jones one is one of my personal favorites. Do you like the series? I do, actually. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Like, it's one of those, like, they, they do a good job of releasing them when there's no other releases coming out. Um, yeah, plus I like, it's not that serious, it's lighthearted. No, and the trailer they showed last night for it actually was really funny. Yeah. Um, that's what you expect from a Lego game. Yeah, so they showed off a trailer for it to announce it's coming out in two weeks, and the demo for that is out too. I actually, I played the demo today. It's actually really fun. They they um, they definitely added a little more to it. Like, you could tell after the last couple of Lego games, they're like, okay, we got to do something to add to this. Um, and they did. They added uh, they added third person uh, third person shooting areas, which actually um, they add their own creative little spin to it, and it's pretty fun. Um, so that game's coming out in two weeks. I actually went today to go put down money for pre ordering it. I'm excited for it, um, but it was weird to see it at E3. It really was. I feel like that's not a very E3 thing to show. No, it's really not. I think I think it was a fact they wanted to they wanted I'm sure Disney asked them to show it because they also showed off the uh, Star Wings uh, Star Wars VR, which is gonna make a bunch of nerds lose their damn minds like the Star Trek VR did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, because I I know a ton of people were like. Both of those games, they're like, you know what, VR, let's talk. We, we can talk. If you if you let me control the Enterprise and an X-Wing, yeah, you got me. <laughs> Didn't they promise us that last time? No. No. I mean, they, they've given us Star Wars and Star Trek games. Star Wars games have been okay to good. Star, Star Trek games have been awful. Oh, wait, I gotta mix up with Star Wars again. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Um, the so there's only really two other things we can talk about with Sony. Uh, the first one, and this was a leak that Aaron called, and that was that Insomniac Games, one of my favorite studios, is working on a Spider-Man game. I am so excited. And um, Spider-Man games have been good to bad. Um, there is one Spider-Man game I really adore, and that's Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Otherwise, they have been Meh, for the most part. So how do you feel about this one, then? Uh, how do you feel about this one as a huge Spider-Man fan, Paige? I'm pretty excited about it as a uh, Spider-Man fan, Paige. Yeah. <laughs> the same, it, it's weird to think that the same studio that did Spire, Ratchet, and Clank now has their hands on the Spider-Man Marvel Universe. I like, I like that it doesn't do the... Go ahead, Paige. I like that it doesn't do the origin; just kind of jumps right in. Yeah, they 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 did reveal that it's gonna be he's gonna be, he's been a hero for a while now. Good. Yeah, Aaron. Huh? You had something to say? I mean, like it was one of those things when the trailer started. As soon as Peter Parker started talking, it was. You just knew. Yeah. So, it wasn't, it was more than, like, just sounding like Peter Parker, but, like, the style of the dialogue was spot on. I and knew, as soon as it started, I was like, I'm excited. I knew it immediately when I saw uh, 
Oscorp tower. Like, you can see it so vividly in the first shot that I'm just like, oh, here it is. I might just be, like, trying to be a hopeful fan, but I feel like Spider-Man has a good future set ahead for him between a uh, Civil War and this. Yeah. No, I... About time. I totally agree with you. After he got screwed from 2012 to 2014, it's nice. It's nice seeing this. Mm -hmm. So, um, the last thing to talk about is, uh, the return of a legend of sorts. Um... So, as many people saw last night uh, and knew, PlayStation has struck an exclusive deal with Hideo Kojima and his new studio, Kojima Studios. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Kojima Productions. And um, they brought him out to the soundtrack of Mad Max Fury Road. Always a good sign. He, that's that the only one of the most epic, like that was one of the most epic entrances I've ever seen. <laughs> but for all that, for all that man has had to go through in the last year and a half, he wholeheartedly he damn well deserved it. He did. He deserved that moment. And um, this guy, you know, he has made the, the games that he has made has made him a legend. It really has. From Metal Gear Solid to the PT franchise to PT, which made everyone lose their minds. This guy is is a true definition of a legend in terms of video game development, and uh, he showed off his new project last night. Um, Norman Reedus. Yeah, with Norman Reedus, um, who tweeted out after the show a picture of Kojima sipping from a cup that said Konami Tears. tears. <laughs> Which, did he really? Yes, he did. That was amazing. I want that. that. Is great. Oh, that cup! That that cup is available. Is. Yes, you can find it online if you just search on Google. Probably sold out everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. I think the company knew that a lot of people were going to buy it. <laughs> um, and it was a very weird. It was a it was a Hideo Kojima trailer in every sense of the word. It was weird. It was cryptic. Nobody knew what was going on. And the game is called Death Stranded. Stranding. Death, yes, thank you, Aaron. Death Stranding. You're welcome. And, um... It was, Norman Reedus. It with was, a fetus. <laughs> I haven't worded on that. <laughs> she was saving that the whole show. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> she was saving that the whole show. <laughs> That's I all I got out of the trailer. Um, not even a... Like I said, there's a thing with him and fetuses. I'm just gonna <laughs> go with that. <laughs> Well, there's a thing with him being weird. You guys have never played the Battle Gear Solid franchise, but he enjoys being weird. And I, mean, I would be more concerned if he did not appreciate being weird. Yeah, he he enjoys being weird, and that's why we all love him. Um, so this immediately shot up to everyone's like most anticipated list, and uh, I don't think we're going to see this game for a long time, quite frankly. Most anticipated, but most anticipated to not play in a room by myself. Yeah. I don't I don't even know if it's a horror game. There's an invisible baby, what looks like like tar or like black blood. What do you think? I thought it was PT for a second. I was just like, oh god. <laughs> Handprints are showing up randomly everywhere. Yeah. Um it... Over fetus. No more fetus. <sighs> She's gonna keep going with that. Um I don't know. I. It's fun to say. <laughs> it is fun to say. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, thank you. It'll be interesting. It'll be really, really interesting to see where they go with this. Um, but I trust Kojima. I mean, the, the, the guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he doesn't have Konami whipping him like a slave now. So. <laughs> Good. Um, it'll be interesting. And Konami has yet to announce anything to see 3 which. Did so... no, they announce something? Huh? What did they announce? Konami and Banka. Like. Bandai, um, oh my gosh, um, Tekken 7. Konami's not a part of that. Wait, oh wait, wow. Capcom. Oh, getting... Bandai Namco, wow. Yeah, Bandai Namco and Capcom because Akuma from Street Fighter is in Tekken 7. For some reason, he's in Tekken 7 and not in Street Fighter 5. My apologies to... Yeah. Um, but... 
Actually, we should. I do want to talk about Tekken Seven actually for a quick second because I forgot. But the it message. wasn't in there. Huh? It wasn't in there. Well, the reason being is because I forgot to bring it up in the Microsoft press conference. I'm actually a huge Tekken fan, and when I saw that, I was kind of perplexed because Tekken has always been a big franchise on Sony. So I was surprised to see it at Microsoft's conference. I think that's why I forgot to talk about it yesterday. Oh yeah, that's right. So, uh, I'm a huge Tekken fan, and when I saw that, I was like, oh, thank God, we got a release date. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, the trailer for Tekken 7, it wasn't a gameplay, uh, there was a little gameplay in it, but it looked really good. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm excited for that. So, yeah, uh, that's it for Sony, really. Ooh, that was a lot. Yeah, other surprising thing to mention, because Sony does this every year, uh, they did not have anything for any games, which I was really surprised about, but at the same uh, time... yeah, that's right. But at the same time, they have a PlayStation experience in February, and I've noticed that's where they announce a lot of indie games. So, Wait, um, so like a Nintendo Direct, but for Sony? Yeah, once a year they have it in February, and that's where they announce a lot of the indie games. That's where they made the announcement that they struck the deal with Adult Swim Games to have all their stuff come to PS4, like a duck, like a duck game, which I would have loved to have seen a release oh, date. Oh yeah. Which I would have loved to have seen a release date for that yesterday. I think, I think they should have shown a little more of the indie uh, development at E3 because Microsoft did make a big point about that within their press conference. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could have really helped Sony really drive home, like, we got a bunch of diverse games coming out to have just even two minutes, two to three minutes of, like, a sizzle reel of indie games coming to PS4 to get people excited. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, that's, uh, that's it for Sony. Uh, what's your, what was your guys' favorite moments? Um, I don't know if I can really pick out a certain moment because my heart was racing so freaking fast that entire show. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't slow down. Like no, it I did not. goosebumps the whole hour or so that they were like streaming and I kept getting more and more exciting like feeling but then the end happened and that kind of slowed it down. But at the same time it's like I was still very excited. Yeah. I used static to explain like some of the other showings, but like this one was not. No, this one Aaron's right. I mean, you, your your heart was pounding because they they did not slow down. They, no. they they kept moving and moving and moving and moving. They definitely stole the show or at least one of the uh one of them that stole the show. Yeah. I think I think they just I think if anything they set a precedent for the other two companies of this is how we do it. They the at E three people want to see games, let's show games. Um, mm -hmm. And an orchestra. And an yes. orchestra. <laughs> can you imagine if like, orchestra. Can you imagine if next year they get to release they get to announce the uh, release date of Final Fantasy seven and they bring that orchestra back to do it? I oh, feel like so for awesome. all releases, we should just have an orchestra for now on. Yeah, right. orchestra to announce the release date of Kingdom Hearts in five years. See, uh, I was thinking ten years from now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so if you liked what we did, uh, we are trying to get ourselves off the ground in terms of this whole crazy reporting on video games and having fun doing video game type content, um, and we need some help. So we have a Patreon set up for... Tanuki Studio, if you search on Patreon, and uh, every little dollar helps. If you guys could give us a dollar, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. We are working on coming up with uh, prize tiers for people who donate a certain amount of money, and um, those will be up very soon, and we are going to uh, definitely hold up our end of the bargain with those prize tiers. I can officially say that one of those prize tiers is... Um, private games of the game Quidplash with yes. us. Yes, thank God. Um, yeah, so that'll be up soon, and if you haven't played Quidplash, it is a blast. It is basically a test of how terrible of a person you are. And how terrible your friends are. Yes. Which I can definitely take responsibility for both of those things you guys said. Yes, um, and we will be having other, uh, we will be having other prize, prizes as well, based on how much you give to our site a month. Uh, so thank you for listening to this. 
Uh, this is our first year doing something like this. We're still we're still trying to get out on the training wheels. We're working our best, but um, I think we're I think we're doing a good job. And um, if you guys watched the whole way through, thank you once again. Um, you're gonna be hearing what more. What the heck is the Oscars music for whenever someone's talking? <laughs> Did you swear? No. Okay, I thought you said something. No, I was just talking about how you were talking too much, and I was looking for Oscars music. <laughs> I did ramble, so uh, I'll cut this off. I'm Lehu. I'm Aaron. I'm Paige. And uh, you all have a great night.